This astounding geologic feature that protrudes out of the rolling prairie surrounding the Black Hills in Wyoming is called Devil's Tower. This site is considered sacred to the Lakota Indians and many other tribes that have a connection to the area. Hundreds of parallel cracks make it one of the most sought after climbing areas in North America as well. Devil's Tower loomed over the northeastern Wyoming landscape for millennia, igniting several bizarre theories and even featured in a popular science fiction movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. National monument erected in this country by Theodore Roosevelt in 1915. Thousands of civilian refugees are fleeing the area, spurred on by rumors that the seven tanker cars that overturned the Cassidy Junction were filled to capacity with GM nerve gas. In just a few minutes, we're going to be by annual surge of close to 400,000 vacationers. And fortunately, during this mishap, there's been no fake outburst. Written and directed by Steven Spielberg, the movie tells the story of an everyday blue-collar worker whose life changes after an encounter with a UFO. One is left wondering what happens next? How does this impact the rest of humanity? The Vatican has recently stated that it would like to convert potential off-worlders to Christianity. Is that likely? Is that a likely scenario? I'm not so sure if that's how things would go down. here is to make Mars seem possible and that you can go. If we can get the cost of moving to Mars to be roughly equivalent to a median house price in the US, around $200,000, then I think the probability of establishing a self-sustaining civilization is very high. The cost of moving to Mars ultimately could drop below $100,000. There's obviously the rocket booster, the spaceship, uh, the tanker, and the propellant plant. This basic system, provided we have filling stations along the way means full access to the entire greater solar system. It would be pretty absurd to try to build a city on Mars if your spaceships just kept staying on Mars and not going back to Earth. You have this massive graveyard of ships. You really want to build the propellant plants on Mars and send the ships back. Well, I think the first journeys to Mars are going to be really very dangerous. The risk of fatality will be high. There's just no way around it. It would be basically, are you prepared to die? But, but it's just, it's the probable lifespan of human civilization would be much greater if we're a multi-planet species. Now that's the defensive argument, but the, the argument that I actually find most compelling is that it would be an incredible adventure. I think it would be the most inspiring thing that I could possibly imagine. Life needs to be more than just solving problems every day. You need to wake up and be excited about the future uh, and be inspired and, and want to live. According to an ex-Pentagon consultant, Eisenhower secretly met with aliens back in the 50s, UFO Digest reports. 
A former U.S. government consultant claims to have knowledge of at least three secret meetings President Eisenhower had with an alien civilization at a New Mexico Air Force base in 1954. Speaking on the BBC show Frank Skinner's Opinionated, he said governments worldwide have been in touch with aliens for decades. Opposing Views reports. Good said there were many witnesses to the meetings and that at one of them, Eisenhower signed some sort of agreement with a space race called the Alien Greys. In 2004, UFO expert Michael Sala wrote an article claiming Eisenhower interrupted his vacation in February 1954 to have one of those meetings with aliens. The Daily Mail reports in recent months, circulation of these rumors has been on the rise. But the claims from Mr. Good, a former U.S. Congress and Pentagon consultant, are the first to be made publicly by a prominent academic. Eisenhower, who was president from 1953 to 1961, is known to have had a strong belief in life on other planets. My name is Robert Sepper. I would like to thank my subscribers who share my posts, and I thank you very much for listening. They definitely captured a vast treasure of information from the underground bases in Germany after the war ended. I mean, they had about 300 underground facilities, according to Renato Vesco, that were huge underground cities. The Germans with the technological development that they've done, there was certainly some involvement by Hitler in some very strange and unusual things. Uh, do you believe that the Germans themselves had any type of connection with extraterrestrials or alien races uh, during the early parts of their development programs? I think that the Germans were heavily involved in, uh, they had contact with extraterrestrials, several races probably. And the more time passes, the more I'm willing to accept the idea that basically extraterrestrials have always been in contact with the major terrestrial governments, and especially the secret societies, which are the fifth column uh, for the introduction of a particular extraterrestrial philosophy in our society. The German secret societies like the Thule uh the Vril Society, and numerous others that I don't even know, uh, have all been in contact with different types of alien races.